Hey everyone, time for another book review. So I've just finished reading this book, which is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. I hope I said that right, Japanese author. Really, really good this. Not a book that I bought myself, but one that my wife read and she said, I think you'll enjoy it. It's unlike anything I've ever read and lots of recommendations, the kind of thing that I hear it and I think, yeah, I have to read this. Um, and it's a short book. It's 160, no, 163 pages. So easy, easy read easy um, read in terms of style as well. Now it's a translation because it was written in Japanese but this is this lady's first book, it's a debut not a novel, I won't really call it a novel, I think a novel has to be about that thick, right? Um, short story, very very good. I'll read you the reviews from Vogue Observer, The Times, Hiromi Kawakami, author of Strange Weather in Tokyo and oh god the Daily Mail. Yeah anyway, um, and then there's news no, I'm not sure what that is. That has a sticker stuck over it, but the review is dreamy. So, okay, there's lots more inside. It's a really well received, really well reviewed book. And my wife's book, she's the one who said, I think you'll enjoy it. What she said about it, it obviously made her think. So I thought I'll read this, was it really makes you think about society's expectations on people and how those people are treated and viewed when they don't fulfill those expectations. But actually, those expectations aren't for everybody and maybe you should just keep doing what you're happy doing because that's what makes you happy. Um, which is a really good summary of how this book made me feel actually. It's, um, I'll read you the back. Kiko doesn't fit in. She's 36 years old. She's never had a boyfriend. She's been working in the same convenience store for 18 years. Her parents wish she'd get a better job. Her friends wonder why she won't get married. But Kiko knows what makes her happy and she's not going to let anyone take her away from her convenience store. And the way it's written, I really enjoyed the style. It's an easy reading style. It's not a lot of flowery language, you know, that, that's unnecessary. Um, but she gets the picture, she gets the feeling across. And I think that needs to be done from a writer's perspective in the least words possible. Um, because it's just enough detail to make you imagine the scene. Because the more the reader imagines the scene, the more you're drawn into the story, the more you're seeing it in your own mind. And she does that really, really well. It is funny because Kiko, the main character, she doesn't fit in. So it's told in the first person. For example, I'm truly a random page here. I've noticed soon after starting the job that whenever I got angry at the same things as everybody else, they all seemed happy. So because she doesn't fit in, she decides that she absorbs the characteristics and the mannerisms and the speech uh, patterns of the people around her. And that helps her to fit in. So it's it's about a misfit, but it's really good. It's really enjoyable. Um, and, and I love the style. I love the style it's written in. So let me read you some of the reviews here. A rare treat, a literary prize winner that's also a page turner. Brilliant, witty and sweet. That's from Vogue. Gloriously nutty, irresistible observer. It is quite nutty. But you understand the nuttiness of the whole thing. So it's like some, it's like if you met somebody who seemed completely crazy and then they said, this is why I see it the way I see it. And you end up thinking, actually, that makes a lot of sense. I'd never considered that. So it is a it is a bit of an eye opener, and I think it will teach you a bit of empathy as well. You know, everybody has this um need. Maybe it's a need. I'm sure there's lots of psychological theories about it to fit in because fitting in is protection, and being ostracised, you're likely to die, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But if we forget about all the theories, everybody likes to judge other people, even when they don't like being judged themselves. That tendency is expressed incredibly well in one of the characters in here, Siraha, um, who's kind of pivotal to the story, actually. And he comes in and... Read it. I won't spoil it for you. It's really, really good. And it's a really, really easy read. Um, but then you realise, actually, we all judge people in the same way that we don't like to be judged. We all put expectations on people in the same way that we don't like to have expectations placed on us. And is it right to get down just because you're not meeting society's expectations? What if you're actually happy doing what you do and you meet all of your own needs without causing any harm? I think that bit's important. It does raise a lot of questions. It does it in a very, very entertaining way. So I think really good books are where you have a concept or an idea or a, or a viewpoint that is represented through a character. Um, and then there's lots in here, which I was thinking, she could have said this, she could have said that. And then I thought, this is so good because... She's made me think of all those things without having to say it. Um, you know, th there's scenes where you think one character's being taken advantage of, but there's no mention that they're being taken advantage of. And definitely that was her intention. 
to make you think they're being taken advantage of, but without having to tell you, now this character is being taken advantage of. It's really, really good storytelling. Um, I'll read you some of the things on the front. Irresistibly quirky, Guardian Books of the Air, hilarious, I couldn't put it down. Elif Batuman, as intoxicating as a sake mojito. Vogue, yeah, it sounds like a Vogue review. This is the one that I took notice of. Exhilaratingly weird and funny, Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney, everything I've read of her in interviews and everything, Irish author. Um, I haven't read any of her books yet. I think one of them is called Ordinary People. I have to look it up, but uh, I'll read her stuff as well. Everything I've read about her in interviews and uh, with her seems really good. So anybody read any Sally Rooney? Any comments? Any? I was going to say any recommendations, but the easy thing is just go and read everything she's written. I'll start with one, and if it's good, read the rest. I feel like just reading you a passage from this book. It's written in the first person. I'll read you some more of the reviews inside. So here's one by Ruth Ozeki, author of A Tale for the Time Being. A gem of a book, quirky, deadpan, poignant, quietly profound. It is a gift to anyone who has ever felt at odds with the world. Yes, absolutely. Um, let me just... Doo -doo. <laughs> so, uh, pick a pick a standalone bit, because if I read you some, then it, it just won't make sense. I mean, this is just about her in the convenience store. Okay, I'll close my eyes, I'll open the book, and I'll read you a passage. The store manager is 30 years old and always business-like. He's manager number eight. He has a sharp tongue but works hard. Manager two was always slacking off, whilst number four was dependable and like cleaning. And number six, who was rather eccentric and, generally, eccentric and generally disliked, had caused a scandal when the entire night shift walked out on him en masse. Doesn't give you a good eye. See, it's her way of thinking and how she analyzes the world and looks at the world and remembers everything in numbers. It seems maybe um, a little bit autistic. And, uh, you know, she solves problems her way. And when she recounts, or when the character recounts, that she did some of these things as a child, it's, it's hilarious. And then there are situations where she has an idea and it, it's not socially acceptable. Well, they're not harmful. And you can see her logic, right? That's part of the beauty of the writing. And then she decided to just go along with her parents or whoever just to keep, you know, to keep the peace. Um, and she's been doing that all her life. And then the interesting thing is the actual writer, Sayaka Murata, I'll read you something about her. Turns out this is mainly... Well, mainly, partially, possibly, definitely informed by her own experience. A best-selling literary sensation, Sayaka Murata has won all of Japan's major literary prizes and been named a Vogue Woman of the Year. Murata spent 18 years working part-time in convenience stores before the success of Convenience Store Woman afforded her the freedom to leave and write full-time. Convenience Store Woman has sold more than a million copies in Japan alone and is being translated into 23 languages worldwide. Wow. Okay. That kind of reminds me of, um, who was the poet, the German American poet who liked swearing and was always hitting on women. He used to work in a post office and his first book was called the post office and he is a poet and the name escapes me. You probably know who I'm talking about, but really good book this, uh, because it's an easy read. It's a good read. It's an entertaining read. It makes you think I give it nine out of 10. So there it is. Um, check it out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Very funny. It makes you think.